This is a persimmon. And as the legend goes, you shouldn't drink milk with it and you shouldn't drink yogurt with it. Because if you do, you might die. And believe it or not, this is not fully lore. Persimmons like this have killed people in the past. Just look what it did to this persimmon milk mix that we did earlier. And of course, today we will be discussing the science and we will be doing a taste test with some of the Fuyu persimmons in my yard. And then I have some of the astringent type, which I'm not gonna tell them what the surprise is for that, but we'll see how they react. Oh, no, got stuck to it, to my tongue. I don't oh, so think this is anybody's <laughs> favorite fruit. So we're gonna talk today about a bunch of things you probably didn't know about the persimmon, which is just an incredible fruit. One of the fun facts is that you could die from it, and no, it's not just because you ate too much of it or it's poisonous or anything like that, but for you to understand the science behind it, you have to understand what makes these persimmons so cool. The basics. The name persimmon is given to a few different species. The Texas persimmon, which grows in this area, and the American persimmon, which grows in the east. There's also one in southwestern Asia and one in Taiwan. But the most common is the oriental persimmon, which I now grow in my yard. We're picking the persimmons. Yeah, I think the varieties of the oriental persimmons here are the ones we likely know from the store. In the US, that's the Fuyu and the Hachia. But to understand the persimmons, and in the end why they might be dangerous, you have to understand some chemistry. You see, there are two main types of persimmons, astringent and non-astringent. Persimmons down! Non-astringent varieties like the Fuyu that I have here can be eaten off the branch when they're still fairly crisp. This is the Fuyu persimmon. It is a non-astringent type. So we are going to taste this one and uh, report back how it tastes. It's like sugary, but it's kind of like cotton candy. It sort of tastes like just sugar. Really? Like brown sugar. Kind of the texture of a muskmelon maybe? So you've oh. never had a persimmon? I never heard of they existed. Really? Never so knew they existed. So you probably never even had one. So I never had So you've one. never had a You're persimmon, right. okay. It's pretty good. And they're fantastic. But most persimmons are astringent. That means they're full of tannins and they taste horrible if they're not fully ripe. Here's a video of me showing Haley her first very astringent American persimmon in Florida. Notice that Haley doesn't taste the tannins right away. It takes a few seconds for that astringency to hit you. Super astringent. My like gums and the whole inside of my mouth are like shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Why do we have a persimmon tree in our yard? <laughs> it's a different kind of persimmon tree. I mean... This... Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> The American persimmons only lose this astringency after they've gotten soft and fall into the ground. That means you can make great jams out of them, but you're not gonna find them in the grocery store. I did, however, for the video, order some Hachia persimmons from California. Try a couple hard slices first. They are an astringent variety. I'm going to give everybody a slice and we'll eat it all at the same time. And I don't recommend eating them if they're at all firm. Big bite. What does it taste like? Oh, I hate this. I need to go inside and wash my it mouth. It makes your tongue dry. It's like it's like you filled my mouth with baby powder. That's so gross. I know. You have a definite dry mouth now. Yeah, you do. Oh my god. I, my it just feels like I can't. I can't open my mouth, but it's, but I can. Now that sensation is caused when the tannins shrink the mucous membranes in the mouth and throat. I can barely talk! Oh, no. First you're like, he not bad. The whole thing. <laughs> you're like, this is pretty good. And then you're like, somebody took a cotton ball yeah. and Stuck sucked all mouth. of the moisture out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> still, <laughs> you can wait on these hachias until they're soft. Then you can scoop them out with a spoon, or slice them up to dry them, or just make paste for fruit roll-ups. They're really good that way. Drying them is actually really good because it gets rid of the tannins. Understanding these astringent tannins is actually really important for understanding that whole death thing. You see, inside of an astringent persimmon is a tannin known as shibuol. 
If you were to eat one that's not yet fully ripe, this tannin, when mixed with an acid, like in your stomach, will form a coagulation, a food lump, so to speak. And most people aren't gonna have a problem with this, they'll continue to digest it, but they have a normal functioning stomach. In rare cases, like when people have had gastric issues in the past, or they've just eaten a lot of persimmons, particularly if they're a little bit astringent, not totally ripe, it can form this solid plant mass in the stomach. That is called a bezoar. Now you're familiar with bezoars. Hairballs are a type of bezoar. They're called a trichobezoar. And a solid plant mass, that's a phytobezoar. Now the most common of all of the plant-based ones are persimmon phytobezoars. Now I looked all this up in the literature and I found it fascinating because they reported all different types of phytobezoars. But something about this size was not uncommon. In fact, that was about what people were reporting. And that is a hard mass that's in your stomach that, believe it or not, before about 20 years ago would either require surgery or you trying to pass it and could get clogged and that is what could kill you. And that has happened in the past. Now, more recently, they found that you can irrigate it with a very strong acid. Now, you don't wanna use like something extremely strong, but what they found is that they can flush it and irrigate it with Coca-Cola. Yeah, you can put lots and lots of Coca-Cola on it and it can over time, and this might take a couple weeks, will dissolve it enough to pass it through your system. Now, they've, they've actually noted in the literature that you could maybe test this using Pepsi, but for now, Coca-Cola is your acid of choice. Cool, huh? Finally, back to that milk and persimmon mix from the very beginning. Adding the persimmon did in fact congeal the milk. Now my guess is that bacteria, which were probably on the persimmon, turned the lactose sugars in the milk to lactic acid. That thickened the whole thing, it essentially made yogurt. But I couldn't find anyone else that did this, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. I did, however, find plenty of reports that the milk and yogurt lore is false. It has everything to do with the creation of those hard bezoars. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope now you know a little bit more about the persimmon than when you started. I need to say a big thank you to my family who continually does these taste tests with me, to my son who's helping me shoot some of the video, and of course to my patrons who are continually supporting this wildlife education. Because look, even though we said at the beginning you could die from a persimmon, the whole point is to educate you on how not to die and how mother nature is not trying to kill you, which of course is the new book that Haley and I wrote, which you can pick up uh, cheaper on Patreon if you want because that supports a local artist. Okay, thanks everyone <laughs> for joining in and we will see you in the next episode. Yep. Yeah. High five. <laughs> <laughs>